okay, we need to fix this because I made a few mistakes. So the first thing that we need to fix is my shirt. The second is make sure to use, instead of three, use two here. You know, it has to be two and one in the breakdown. And then here, it has to path, make, make sure it's true. And here it is set to false if it doesn't have a true path. Then we can come here and that should be fixed. Those are the fixes that I found. Okay, so now if we run the program, let me clear this up. Now it's listening for transactions. Let me update this, save this. And this is a swap on Whirly. Simply click on swap for a token that I've created. You swap that and you see it's been captured here. This transaction went through all the checks. It checked all of this here. It decoded the universal router data from here and it returned this console log. All right, guys, check this new project I've created. It's called MEV DAO, and it's simply a community where we will be building MEV tools. The Telegram link is t.me slash MEV DAO. So as you can see, we have the transaction, which is the entire transaction. The amount in, this is a big number. We will deal with that in a moment. The min amount out and the token to capture. So now we go to the next step, which is to get and sort the reserves. Why do we need this? Well, the reserves are used to calculate how much you will get after swapping one or another token. So it's just a fast way to calculate the profit and the amount that you will get from swapping. To do that, we need to get the pair address because we, we have the transaction here. Now we need to know which pair does this transaction go to because the pair contract allows us to get all the information regarding the swaps, to calculate all the swaps and stuff. So we need the pair address. We can do that to to access by accessing the, the factory. By the way, I forgot to mention that we need to attach to the factory contract, factory Uniswap factory, the factory address, because we will use it right away, just like that. You see, we are attaching it, attaching the address to be used in a moment. So now we, we get the pair address. To, for, for doing that, we go to the factory and we execute the function get pair. If you go to ether scan, you will notice that there's such a function. And to get the pair, we need to pass the, the tokens that belong to the pair. In this case, it's the width, the width others, and the all the parameter is this. Go to checks passed. In fact, let me break down this. Let me extract all the variables from this data. You see, from the initial checks, we extract all of these parameters. The transaction, the amount in, the minimum amount out, and token to capture. All of that will be useful in a moment. The token to capture is the one that will be received in the transaction. By the way, what, what we're building here is a generalized sandwich MEV bot. It makes money from trying to sandwich every single transaction it sees. doesn't matter which token it is. You can make um, an MEV bot just focused on a few pairs. Anyway, once we have that, we access the pair. We do pair, pair factory dot attach the pair address. That way we can access the contract of the pair and call functions from it. Now we need the reserves. The reserves are, let's say we have with USDC, the reserves are, let's say there's a thousand with and a hundred million USDC. Those are the reserves. How much tokens, how many tokens are in the pair contract? We need that to calculate the following. The so first we do a try, and what we are doing here is we're trying to get the reserves from the pair contract. We do pair dot get reserves. That's a function from the pair contract. If it fails, simply return false. Basically, we stop the execution of this transaction, processing this transaction. Now we will get the, re the reserves, but they are not sorted. We need to make sure they are sorted. So the token and the width are in the right place. This is important for calculations that we will do later. Reserve A and reserve B. For that, we simply check with others is less than token to capture. Now we are comparing hexadecimals. These are like numbers. You can compare them and check which one is bigger than the other. So that then we do the reserves and we do reserve zero. It's called it reserve zero and same thing for B, but this time it's the reserve one. This is just how it works on Uniswap. Now, if it turns out that the width address is larger than the token to capture, I meaning it goes after it, we simply swap sw swap these ones. We say zero, one and zero. That's how you sort it. 
there is a max fee per gas or let's just call it mass gas fee and this will be the transaction dot second max fee per gas this is the maximum amount of gas you are willing to spend for this transaction where in this case the victim's transaction this sometimes this is empty because it's it could be a type zero transaction which doesn't have this property if it's empty we let's first set up a variable called bribe to miners <clears throat> this is how much we are will we are willing to pay to the miners let me check lifts parsed units in this case we are giving the miners let's say 200 g way or the 20 because the way we pay the miners because they need to be paid for us to, to receive the transaction to be included to, to include the bundle in order to pay the miners we increase the gas costs beyond what's expected that way they get more money from us so if this is defined we simply go take the max gas fee and we add the bribe that way we are giving the miners the bribe otherwise if it's not defined we simply do the bribe that's what we're giving to the miners and the priority fee is like so the priority fee has a very ugly name if you check this you can see max priority fee per gas I don't know why they made it so long but and this one is always defined by the way so for some reason this one is always there so we again we add the bribe because the priority fee is the fee that the miners get the base fee is the base fee that goes to the block and things like that so now that we have that we go to the next step these are the fees that we will use for our transactions the next step is to buy using the amount in and calculate the amount out now for our for this bot this is a very simple bot by the way for this one we will send we will buy before the victim and how much we will buy is defined here in this case we will buy zero one go early ether this is basically this this says we will buy zero one of that token that we are targeting the victim will buy the token with the increased price because we bought earlier and the, then we'll sell the token for more goal if we expect to get like 1.2 1.1 something like that a profit after sending the bundle and executing everything so how do we calculate how much we need to send we need to calculate first before making everything how many tokens we are sending for that we, we simply do the following first amount out we do a weight and we call the uniswap contract the function get amount out there's a function in the uniswap router that's called get amount out and we simply pass the buy amount the first reserve and the second reserve now you can implement this function yourself in javascript in pure javascript but that's a bit more outside this the scope of this tutorial so this is how many tokens this, this variable tells us how many tokens we will get after buying 0.1 ether of the particular token we need this in order to format and send the bundle now we we get the updated reserves updated reserve a this is important to make the next calculations we simply do add by amount what i'm doing here is i'm taking the first reserve which is worth ether and then i'm adding the by amount how many i got i mean how many i'm given i'm basically increasing the amount of ether in the reserves of that pair so now reserve b and the reserve b is a bit more, diff more different we're taking the amount out we are getting simply add the amount out yeah this is this tells us how many tokens there will be leaving the reserves of that pair all right now we calculate a second swap this is how many tokens the victim will get after we increase the price this is let's imagine this is the swap we got this many tokens we added this many tokens of ether and now the price is increased the tokens are more expensive you will get less tokens for the same amount of ether so now we need to calculate how many tokens the victim will get wait unit swap get amount out but in this case we pass the amount in this is the victims ether that he's getting has given to the swap exchange and then we pass the updated reserves data reserve a data reserve b how many tokens the victim will get now 
once we have that, we know how many tokens I'm getting after buying 0.1 Ether, and we know how many tokens the victim is getting after buying that amount with updated reserves. So why do we need this? Well, because we want to make sure, you see this variable min amount out, this is the minimum amount of tokens the victim expects to receive. So let's say you swap one Ether for 100 DAI, but because of slippage, you know, there may be a few transactions going before yours, because there's a very, there's a many, many transactions going on. So your, your minimum amount out is 95 DAI, like I showed before. This means you are okay with getting less tokens. So what we're doing here is we're buying 0 0.1 ETH so that 1 ETH, imagine the price is, yeah, the price is 1 ETH, 100 DAI. After me buying 0 0.1 ETH, uh, maybe I get 10 DAI. And the price increases from 1 ETH to 95 DAI. That means you get less DAI, less tokens, and the victim then buys after you. You know, I mean, it's a bit confusing, but once you think about it, once you repeat it, it makes sense. So what we do here is we take the second amount that the victim gets and we compare it less than minimum amount out. This means the, the amount of tokens the victim gets if is less than the minimum amount out will return false. This means, actually, yeah, console log, victim would get less than the minimum. This simply means that the victim is getting less tokens than the minimum. And why am I using LT instead of, you know, something like this? Because these variables are all, this one, this one, they are all big number. As you can see here, they're a big number. This is like a function that formats data in hexadecimal and allows you to store large numbers easily. So that's why we are using less than, which is simply the same thing as, as the less than symbol. So now we, we get the, we can calculate the profit from here. We can just take, you know, how many tokens you're getting, but we are not going to do that here. You can do that yourself. 